Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today um, for the session Migrating to QBO Resource and Client Onboarding. Uh, my name is Tanya Franelik and I am a Solutions Architect here at Intuit QuickBooks. And I'm also the owner of Legal Eagle Admin Services. Uh, I'm a certified professional bookkeeper with CPB Canada and have been an advanced certified pro advisor and bookkeeper for approximately 20 years. Um, at the end of this session, we are going to address some questions and answers. So please hold on to those and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. Today's agenda is going to be going through um, our service delivery manager team. We're going to walk you through a Sage 50 migration as well as the data validation and showing you how the zero migration differs a little bit from that Sage migration using the data switcher tool. Finally, we're going to cover uh, list import options and finally the onboarding resources available for your small business clients as well as for your firm. We're going to start off with your service delivery managers. This here is your team. We have Scott Bailey, who is the manager, Abdul Hashim, who is in charge of our national accounts, Alex Nort, Hamad Sheikh, Isabel Malo, Kudzanai Chasosa, Rami Karaman, and Natalie Bramo. So what exactly does your service delivery team do? They basically direct you towards training. They can discuss what options for training are available, where to find that training, provide additional training resources like webinar links and upcoming events, and explain the benefits of the training and their pro advisor program. They can also assist you with migrations. And if you're doing your own migrations, um, if your shells are older than 90 days, they will need to unlock those for you. They can only do those for empty QuickBooks Online files. Um, if there's any data or transactions in it, they will not be able to unlock them. And by doing these migrations, we basically help take those off your plate so that you can continue running your business. The SDM will provide a post-migration analysis and indicate discrepancies to make any adjusting journal entries easier. They can also provide onboarding resources for you and your uh, firm to provide to your clients. So any types of tutorial videos, um, et cetera. We also have training tutorial videos and onboarding resources for your clients, such as what are the benefits of the cloud, chart of account templates for specific industries, as well as other resources to help remove barriers to your growth and increase your efficiency. Basically, we want you to tell us what it is that you need at this particular moment. Um, and we're constantly in communication with you on this journey to moving you over to the cloud and supporting you. Finally, we have client segmentation, which helps you to determine which clients are a good fit for QuickBooks Online, as well, it, uh, it'll help you to achieve your goal for migrating clients to QBO by keeping you accountable to the plan you set. Whether that's one client every month, whether it's 10 clients a week, really is up to you and what you feel that you can handle. Now we're going to talk about our new process for migrations. Um, Sage migrations and our zero migrations as well are done by a third party out of the Netherlands called Result. They have created this tool named Data Switcher. Data Switcher allows us to import approximately two years of transactional history as actual transactions. It includes the migration date and goes back two calendar years. Be sure that you start with the first month of your client's fiscal year, but you can bring in additional years at an additional cost. So if the books are messy or, and or behind, um, you know, maybe they stopped at 2018, we're now in 2021, so you can go back to 2020, uh, sorry, 2019. If you need to go back to 2018 or 17 or 16, you can pay for those to get them in there. It will also bring in inventory, and we can bring in classes and departments for an additional cost, but please be aware that those will come in as journal entries instead of transactions. You will also have your accounts receivable and account payable detail for outstanding customers and vendors as of the migration date. And there's approximately a three to five day uh, business day turnaround, including the post migration analysis if your SDM does this for you. It will bring in the multi-currency as Canadian. So if you do have a Sage file that is multi-currency, you will need to adjust um, some of your vendors and suppliers and recreate them with the proper currency and 
um, do those general entries, moving them out from the Canadian to the proper currency. This link here is going to go through your Sage 50 migration limitations, allowing you in more detail to know what is and isn't possible to come over. So there are two ways to actually access your data switcher. The first is from within your QBOA account or a client's QBO file. You would click on the gear icon and select import outside data. The second way is to click on this link and both of those methods are going to take you to the permission page that you see in the image on the left. When you're on the permission page, you're going to enter in your email and tick all three boxes acknowledging that you understand our privacy policy, what information will be migrated, as well as the terms and conditions of the migration service. You can see the details of those by clicking on the blue hyperlink text. Um, and if you're ready to go, click the Let's Go button. The next screen you're going to see is the one that it asks you where you're moving from at the top. You're going to select your Sage 50 Canada to QuickBooks Online in this case. And then there's a page that's sort of more informational about what you need to know. There are highlighted hyperlinks to moving to QuickBooks uh, Online, as well as resetting your account if it's within the 90 days. If you are good with all of the information that you have read, please hit let's go. And that will take you to the third screen, which allows you to now put in your contact details. The company information is going to be the name of the company that you're migrating to QBO, as well as the email of the person who is submitting the migration and you want to get the uh, notifications when the migration is complete. Alternatively, you can also click on the blue Intuit button that allows you to sign into your QBO or QBOA account from here, and that prevents you from having to do that at a later stage. This next screen allows you to choose what type of migration you would like. There are three types. The first is a simple, which brings in a trial balance as of the migration date, today's date, and it has no history. The standard brings in two years of information via journal entry. So you will have transactions, just not as actual transactions. You will need to use this version if you're migrating to an Easy Start QBO subscription because it doesn't track the AP and cannot match bill payments. The one we usually use is the Pro. This one will actually bring in two years of information as transactions. If you have inventory, you will need this version to be able to bring it in. When you selected the Select button under the this screen allows you to choose any extra options. You will note that most of these do have an additional cost. Uh, inventory is free, but here is where you could select any extra years that you need to bring in, and or you can also choose to bring in the classes and locations as well. Once you have ticked the boxes of the services you wish, you just click the Confirm button. If you don't want to bring any of those items in, you don't need to check any of the boxes. If you chose uh, any extras that required payment, you will be taken to this invoice details screen. You will need to fill out the invoice information as well as credit card. It will itemize in the highlighted section the items that you are purchasing and the total cost, including your sales tax. Once you've finished that, hit continue. This screen here is now where we're going to attach our Sage backup file. In step one, you're going to upload the CAB file by clicking Browse on Computer button and locating that CAB file on your hard drive. If there are login credentials to your Sage backup, enter the sysadmin username and password, and you're going to select the beginning month of the company's fiscal year. So earlier when I mentioned that you could bring in approximately two years of data, it really depends on when you're submitting that migration and what your customer's uh, fiscal start date is. For example, right now we're almost mid-year, and if your client has a January to December fiscal year, you're going to select January as the month. That beginning year that shows 2018 on this slide is actually currently going to show 2019. It will change at the end of every December to only allow you to go back to calendar years. So if my customer had that January to December fiscal year and I'm submitting it in June, I'm going to get about two and a half years worth of data. However, if my customer's fiscal year is October, 
and I'm submitting it for October 2019, you're only going to get about a year and a half. So it really depends on when you're submitting it and how far back the data can go. Make sure you tick the little box that says I have read and understand the conversion limitations. If you need to review those again, click on the blue text. It will open up an additional tab where you can review that information. And then once you're ready to go, click continue. Finally, we're going to log into QBO and connect our company. If you have a QBO A account, your account version, you're going to need to select your firm and then choose the QBO company. If you're migrating into your QBO A free books, make sure that you select the install for your firm checkbox. If you are a small business, you wouldn't need to search for the firm, you would only enter the company name at the top. Once you have uh, all of the information, make sure you press next. If you are migrating into your firm, please know that we cannot actually purge your QBOA if the migration goes a little bit weird. It might be better to use an empty shell or a trial to be able to test it out first. Make sure everything comes over as needed and then re-migrate it into your firm books again after. Uh, the first screen on this slide here lets us know that we are, we are okay to connect Data Switcher to that company. Um, you're going to click the green connect button. And the second is verifying that you want to connect your QBO account to data, uh, to that company as well. And you're going to see in both highlights that the name of the company to which you have selected the migration is highlighted there and bolded. If everything is okay, go ahead and hit start. Once you hit the start button, you will end up getting this uh, screen that allows you to confirm and track the fact that you're moving your data over. If you click on the green clipboard, you could actually paste that URL into a OneNote or some other method to be able to track it. However, when you get your um, email confirmations, which look like this, you're going to end up getting two confirmations. The first is confirming that you have connected to Data Switcher. And the second is that the migration is about to start and that you can track your move from that green button. The green clipboard in the previous screen is the same URL that is found in this, um, in this email. Sometimes I have found I have not received the email, so my OCD doesn't allow me to uh, not click the, the clipboard and put it into an Excel or a OneNote to keep track of the migrations I'm doing. For me, that's just a best practice, um, but you will be able to track it regardless. When your migration is finished, you will get this email here that confirms your migration has been completed and that you're almost done. It allows you to review your move once you validated the data to confirm successful migration. You have 72 hours to validate your data and confirm the migration. Otherwise, it's going to auto approve. Um, we're not going to go and click on the button yet. What we want to do is go ahead and compare the data from our QBO to our, um, to our Sage file. And there's a few things that we're going to want to check. So one of them is checking the profit and loss for each year. The second is checking our balance sheet for each year that we've brought in. And then lastly is checking your AR and AP summaries as of the migration date in SAGE. So to help you do that, we actually have a template in Word that we use. This is what it looks like. If you're doing multiple migrations at the same time, I suggest using this upper section. It allows you to put in the date that you are checking it, whether or not they had inventory, whether or not they have um, departments or multi-currency. I find that using this template before I submit as well as after allows me to also choose which options I wanted as extras in the previous screens when submitting the uh, data switcher. What their fiscal start year uh, month is, and then the company name and even QBO ID is uh, nice and easy as well. Here you have your date range you're going to manually input. So whatever the beginning of the fiscal year is to the current date in the year, if it's not a full year. And then your prior years, you can go ahead and tab um, at the end of here to just give you some additional um, rows. And you will put in the date ranges for each full fiscal year you will put a note how much your SAGE amount is as well as your QBO and the same with your balance sheet. 
On the balance sheet especially, I always like double checking my AR lines, my AP lines, as well as my GST, HST payable lines um, and PST if you're in a PST province, just to make sure that all of those numbers match. Sometimes, you know, things might just go a little bit high haywire, always good to double check. And then finally, as of the migration check date, which is usually same day, if not next day, you're going to note how much your AR summary total is in SAGE as well as QBO and the same for your AP. So after the migration has been completed and you've checked your data, um, before you start adding any additional information, you're going to want to do a few of these sort of post-migration tasks. I've noted them here, but there is also the post-migration task tasks hyperlink at the bottom of this slide that you can click on for a more extensive list to make sure that you haven't missed anything. The first thing you'll need to do is to consolidate the sales tax into one line item so that you can use the QBO sales tax module. The second is to do one large bank reconciliation to bring you to your current reconciliation period. And third is that if you have journal entries in SAGE affecting your AR or AP, you're going to need to manually apply the credits in QBO post-migration. Any customers or vendors with open balances, you will also have to manually apply the payments in QBO post-migration. One of the reasons that we did this was we know not everyone pays their oldest invoice and you don't pay your oldest bill all the time for a variety of reasons. So we wanted to give you the opportunity to select uh, which invoices and or bills you are paying to ensure that the correct invoices and bills are showing as outstanding to correlate with your SAGE file. So now our zero migration. It also uses Data Switcher and is almost identical to the SAGE migration. The only difference is, is that it's going to connect you to zero instead of uploading that CAB file. Another main difference is that our zero migrations cannot do multi-currency because of the way that zero calculates that um, multi-currency. Here is another hyperlink with information on limitations for transferring zero data to QBO. Here's some screenshots of what those zero migration screens look like that are a little bit different. When you go to connect to your Zero, you will be asked to log into Zero from Data Switcher. It's just entering your Zero login credentials, clicking the login button, and then confirming that it's okay to give Data Switcher access to that Zero account. You'll see under organization data where I've blurred out this company's name, it will actually give you that company name and the user account information who's logged in underneath the user account information. If you need additional information for terms of use or connected apps, you can click on the highlighted hyperlink text and then click the allow access button. Finally, we want to connect to QBO and we'll connect to the QBO button, which will again take us back into the options for QBO that we addressed in the Sage instructions. Once your migration is complete, you will get the same emails that we showed you in the Sage migrations. And their validation template for zero is almost the same, but a little bit different. So you will note here that we have our fiscal date, start date, whether or not it has multi-currency, whether or not it has inventory. And we're looking for this current fiscal year and last fiscal year. You will compare the zero and QBO amounts but instead of our balance sheet, we're actually going to compare the trial balance as of today's date. So you will put in the date that you're checking and then go ahead and enter your zero amount and QBO amount. Very similar to my suggestion about the balance sheet checking AR, AP, and tax lines, I would also recommend this step here. That's for any uh, post-migration that you do, whether it's from QuickBooks, Desktop, Sage, Zero, or another third party you want to make sure that everything is in the spot that it needs to be in and it hasn't moved around because the two programs are either different um, or that they just behave differently. And then finally, you're going to compare your AR and AP aging summaries as of the current date as well. Now, what happens if you can't import from a file because either Intuit doesn't support it 
or it's a messy desktop file and you really don't want to bring in the history, or even if it's a desktop file and it exceeds the 350,000 uh, target limit. Well, you can use list imports. So that's used to bring in generally as much information as you can for things like chart of accounts, your customer and vendor information, maybe your products and services, um, as well as journal entries for an opening balance. The limitation for using the list import data within QBO is that you have to complete the import templates that are provided. To access those templates, you would go to your gear, tool columns, import data button. Each section has its own template that you can download. I believe it's called download sample data. It's blue hyperlink text um, and it will download an Excel style file with columns and rows um, for you to be able to put in your information. You can copy and paste from a different platform by exporting that data to another Excel um, and then being able to bring it in. There are certain fields that are absolutely mandatory in those, um, but there are others that are optional. You can check with your service delivery manager. They can help you navigate those and tell you which columns are, um, are necessary to fill out. But each section has its own template and we can also enter your opening balances if you provide the trial balance. If you have any AR or AP, it's also recommended that you provide an AR and AP summary so that we can take the names of the customers or vendors along with those balances to add them to that journal entry to bring in your trial balance. Alternatively, you can also use a third party to do this, such as Sassant, Transaction Pro Importer, and a bunch of different others. They're definitely more robust as far as what information that you can bring in. Um, QBO itself is limited to bank data, chart of accounts, customers, supplier information, products and services, bills, journal entries, and invoices. The other third parties can bring in things like checks and expenses and payments. So depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve, QBO may or may not be suitable enough to do this. So finally, we're going to tackle onboarding resources for small business clients. So I've decided to put together a little bit of a French and English column sort of table for you as to what resources you can provide as, as a trusted pro advisor to your clients to help them navigate QBO and how to do things. So the first one is the bookmark for QBO login. The second is our self-help community where you, they can ask questions or find articles um, for various topics related to QBO. Um, our customer care landing page where they can start a chat with care. And then there's also a QuickBooks Small Business Center. This link here allows them to go ahead and take a look at things, how to build their business um, from a small business standpoint. There's links to tutorial videos. These are really short three and a half minute or less tutorials that will remind them how to create invoices, receive payments, create an estimate, etc. It will help them keep them sort of accountable to learning QBO without constantly having to call you every five minutes. We also have a product webinars page that's specifically for our small businesses. So there's white papers and recorded webinars that they can watch um, to learn more about QBO and how to use it properly. There's also a main QuickBooks support page for our various products such as Enterprise, Desktop, and QBO. And finally, I've included a how to add your accountant to QBO for those who have either come to you with their own subscription um, or have set it at a trial or whatnot where you need to have access to their file. Now for firm resources, there are a lot of actual options available to you. Um, one is there are a few new training options in your Pro Advisor, Pro Advisor portal in your QBOA. Uh, the first one is benefits in managing clients. The second is migrating an existing company to QuickBooks Online. And the third one is creating a company in QuickBooks Online. The fourth one, the QuickBooks Online payroll training, isn't all that new, but I wanted to include it because I'm finding that a lot of people don't really know it's there, but it is, and it's good. Um, you have your account manager. 
and your account manager is there to help understand sort of what your firm's vision and goals are, how you want to grow, what do you want to achieve, within what timeline. And that helps your service delivery manager be able to hold you accountable to achieving those goals and to remove any barriers that are preventing you from getting to those goals as far as we can. You also have customer care. They're best to reach out to for technical issues. You can reach them from the contact us button in your help menu uh, within your QBO and or there was also the link to the customer care to start a quick chat. We also have Facebook groups, which are good groups to understand things from more of an accounting perspective um, to kind of help understand, you know, what are workarounds or workflows. I would always suggest that you go ahead and try to search those groups um, and communities for the answers before posting. My one caveat is if the answer is um, more than six months, try posting again because it may be outdated. Also, don't forget Google is your best friend. And finally, we have our QBO community, which again is the um, self-help community. It's engaged in by small businesses, by accountants, by pro advisors, as well as Intuit Care staff. So here we have the link specifically for your firm. Some of these are repetitive, um, but I wanted to split them up so that you could you know, copy and paste the first table and send that directly to clients as necessary if you needed to, et cetera, and not get confused what was for who. So this here, again, has QBO login, self-help community, as well as your customer care. Um, instructions on how to find your account manager information from within your QBOA. And your service delivery managers try to be sort of the constant that connects you to your account manager. We are, they are assigned to account managers and they try to stay the same every quarter, but obviously with hiring and leaving and expansion as well, um, you know, sometimes that needs to be rejigged a little bit. So if you're ever not sure um, and you've never had a service delivery manager before that you know of, reach out to your account manager. If you have had dealings with an SDM before, feel free to always just reach out to the last person who you knew to be. If there have been any internal changes, they will always do a new intro to someone else if they've been reassigned. There is also the pro, advising, pro advisor training, and this lets you know how to access it in your QBOA. Um, there's also a landing page we have on our website about how to train and onboard your clients. We have Business Builder Webinar uh, Library, which isn't really QuickBooks related, their webinar is done by some of our pro advisors who are also very active on social media to help you understand how to grow your business from aspects outside of and independent of QBO. It could be something like uh, marketing, it could be social media, it could be a whole bunch of different things. There's some great topics in there if you're wanting to scale. Finally there on this page, we have the payroll setup checklist good thing to make sure that you don't miss any steps when connecting your QBO payroll. Um, second page for you guys, we also have a direct link to that data switcher permission page here that we noted earlier in the uh, Sage migration slides. Um, we have a new web page for QBO features and product updates. This is replacing the old QBOA Canada release notes page. Um, they're trying to keep this one as well with small videos attached to show you how those features works. So this is really good. Note that this will not go back retroactively to cover the old page. Um, I believe it's starting somewhere around uh, October of 2020 going forward. Uh, a QuickBooks status page. This is a really helpful link for you. If you ever think, hey, maybe QBO is not down because I can't log in, that's the page that's gonna tell you if we're experiencing any technical issues. I believe you can even subscribe to updates so you'll get emails from the dev department letting you know when it's down. Um, a lot of people have asked us about our security and compliance and privacy, so I've included two links for that. And then an article on how to add remove clients from wholesale billing. This one's really important, especially with disengaging um, and now engaging with customers who are coming either from another firm or with their own set of books that they had purchased. 
The process has changed a little bit. Now, if a small business has their own QBO, they need to allow you permission to put them on wholesale billing, and this article will address that. Um, and then finally, we also have a small business center for accountants, things to help you as a small business accounting firm to grow your business as well. Great resources there uh, for you. So just a few takeaways from today's uh, presentation. One is that you have a team behind you to help remove barriers to your growth. We are here to support you and to find ways and innovate and constantly pivot and move to make sure that you're feeling that we're here for you. Um, there are resources for both you and your clients to assist with onboarding. And you can do your own migrations or your service delivery management team can help. Finally, always remember to validate your data after a migration before adding new information. Thank you so much for attending today and uh, hopefully we'll get to chat again soon.